Hey guys, my name is Jennifer and I am Genevieve Designs. Today I'm going to record the covers, but I just wanted to kind of give you like a heads up really quick. It is Sunday afternoon. My husband's home. My youngest son is home. Uh, my older son and my daughter-in-law and my grandbaby are coming over in like three hours. And I literally have no time and today's the 13th of December. So, I am. Go I already prepped just about everything as best I could because we're gonna we're, we're really gonna do this setup because everybody wanted to see how um, I got this flip pocket and stuff on the covers. So we're definitely gonna do this. Uh, so I've already prepped everything. Um, I don't know if we'll get to the closure today, but we are definitely gonna get to the covers um, today. So we are working in the Basically Amazing with the Basically Amazing Foundations and the Basically Amazing Charming. And we are using the Sugar Cookie Paper Collection by Prima. I'm also working on my lighting. I don't know. I still feel like it's super hard to see in my monitor, but I'm hoping it'll be better when I go to edit it. <laughs> anyway, so this is the paper collection we're using. I have a whole playlist uh, for this album starts from the beginning to the end, step by step. Um, I take you into the construction, you know, bit by bit, video by video. And if you follow that playlist, you can uh, follow along right along with me. I'll link it up here in the cards and down below in the description box. And there's also an Amazon uh, list, um, uh, list specifically for this album. If you want to check out everything that I show you. Um, in the video everything that I use as best I can some things are not in Amazon so I can't so I list things separately if need be there's also a giveaway going on during this album series so I don't know exactly the date it'll be over but all that information will be down in the description box because I'm going to draw the winners at the end of making the album uh, when the last I don't know maybe after the last video of this album series posts so all you have to do is be a subscriber give me a thumbs up Leave a comment under the videos in the playlist, skip the first five, and then I will draw out uh, two or three names using the YouTube comment picker. And I'll, I'll pick three different videos probably and draw three different names. But it's for some, some of the paper collection and different things. So don't forget to do that. First thing, before I show you everything that we're going to be using out of the templates, paper clay. So, we're gonna prep the paper clay. So in, in my prototype, I've got the Santa, the snowman, and the ice skates. And what did I do with it? This is the mold that I used. It's the one by Prima. Um, I've got it linked to my Amazon, but I think it might be sold out, but you can still check it out in that Amazon list. But I think they might still have it at other stores, so I'll try to link this one specifically. Um, it's super cute. It's a really nice mold. And I also used the paper clay, um, this particular paper clay. So I pre-made them because they need time to dry. So I wanted to show you what I do, or what, I, what we need to do now. So, okay, on this one, I sprayed this one with Distress Oxide Spray while it was still wet. And this one is the Speckled Egg. Look how cute that is. Um, it's not, I'm not done with it yet, but um, that's what I did on my prototype. But I also thought, let's see if we could do it with just the ink pad. If you don't have the spray, we can just do it with the ink pad. Because this is just paper clay. This is has not been sealed. Look, it's not even fully dry yet. Can you guys see that? It's not even. That's okay, though. This one is. Oh, and he got a little bit of, of blue on his. That's okay. Um... And this one's fully dry. The sand is just a little thicker. So, thought I would use the the um, ink pad, and I might need to use a water brush. Let's see. Oh, I don't even need the ink pad. Oh, yes, I do. Because <laughs> that's leftover spray. I just don't want to get rid of it. So just like we did with when we embellished or changed the color of those ephemera pieces. I just squirted it out and um, squirted it out. I just smooshed it out onto the the mat here and I'm adding water. And yeah, you can do the same exact thing. So you don't have to have the spray if you don't have it. Cool. 
um, to cover the whole thing. I know you can like paint like little details and stuff on it, which is fun. All right, so I'm going to do this really quick. I'm not going to use this one, but I do want to cover the whole thing. I think it'd be cute. A little bit lighter. It's not as thick as the, or, or as dark as the, or can, no, what's the word? It's not as, um, not as, uh, dense, thick, opaque, opaque. <laughs> I was, I was getting there. I'll leave you guys. I'll just spray it a little bit. Spray it a little bit. I just squirt a little bit of water out onto my palette. So, yeah. So, it's not quite. Let me zoom you in without getting this all over my camera. Right? It's not quite as opaque. So, we might like that better. But this was using the spray and this was using the brush and ink okay now let's back up maybe not too far because I do want to use this on the little Santa the little Santa the little snowman right I want to change the color of his or paint the color his scarf let me get some more his little scarf oh it's gonna bleed a little bit but that's okay and I want to get his little toboggan Paint it blue. You could, if you wanted to, you could go all out and you could shade him to make him look dimensional. But since he's already dimensional, you don't have to do that if you don't want to. But yeah, I just think that's cute. Maybe we'll want it. Maybe after we put the matte medium on there, maybe we'll put um, some little eyes. That might be kind of cute. Okay. So. I'm going to dry those. This is a craft tool, a Ranger heated craft tool. This one's already dry. Hey, yeah, look at, look at cutie. Yeah, isn't that cute? So, try super 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 fast now I'm gonna take a brush this is just a no not that brush. I'm gonna take another brush no I'm gonna use that one this one's um, kind of owed and more out so I'm gonna take this brush and I'm gonna use multi matte medium you can use Mod Podge you can use pretty much anything you want because we're just gonna seal them this is my favorite because what I like about this is you can then ink over top of it and it's not sticky when it dries also I like that so I'm just going to put a layer over all three pieces not this one let's use this one and I guess we could have painted Santa's little ah! now he's got more blue on him Santa's little hat but, okay. So you want to paint both sides. Oh, i got to be careful. I'm going to try to get the bulk of the white part of the snowman covered before I go, before I go over the blue. Or the speckled egg. Okay. And then I might just tap it on there. I don't want to spread it all over the snowman, even though that'd be cute too. Okay, there's that one. And then we got this one. Aren't these little skates cute? I love them. And these don't have to be used just for Christmas. These could be used for anything. A little girl scrapbook album. Um... You could, if you want to, knock the skates part off of it. You know, that part, the blade part. And they could just be some cute little shoes. Or boots. Okay. All right. We're going to dry this side. And then I'm going to seal the other side. And then I'll be back. So, now they're sealed. But I wanted to show you the difference. 
between the one I sprayed and it's not sealed and the one we just did and it's sealed. Is it focusing? I hope it's focusing. So we're going to use the one we just did. That's super cute. And we'll put that one aside. Maybe we'll use that one on the, on the spine or something. I doubt it, but anything's possible. Okay. Um, and then here is the little snowman and the little Santa. Yep, aren't they cute? Okay, so now they're sealed. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take our Distress Oxide and we're just going to vintage them up a little bit. If you don't want to, you do not have to. So I'm going to vintage it up just a little and try to hit some spots there and rub it off a little bit. I'm determined to get more blue on the old Santa. Okay. And then the skates. All right, perfect. So these are now ready to go. I think I'm just gonna sit them up here. I'm gonna scooch back out. Oops, it was crooked. I'm just going to set them up here for now. Move that out of the way. Okay. So now, what we're going to need from the templates that we're going to be using this little die cut too as well. It just keeps flopping in the way. So I thought I would just go ahead and get that out. So I'm going to set that right there. All right. So out of the foundations, the Basically Amazing Foundations, I printed the covers for the B size album. So this would be page 50B. I printed the covers onto this pattern paper. This is gonna be covering our back cover. That's what it looks like on one side and that's what it looks like on the other. I also I printed, actually didn't print it, I traced it on this one. This is, actually this is coffee stain paper because I ran out of my foiled parchment. So I thought I would just go ahead and use the coffee stain paper that I already had foiled, right? I don't know how well that's showing up. It's not really showing up. But I do have a video on foiling. I will link that up in the cards and down below if you wanna check it out. Um, it's a little bit more in depth than me saying, hey, I printed this off and ran it through my make machine and voila, you know, okay, so. Um, we're going to be using this on the front cover, and then that's all we're going to need out of the foundation right now. And then in the Basically Amazing Charming, I needed the mat for this spine, which was this one right here. So it's page 53, but I traced it, and I actually traced it to be a little wider because, you know, when you put... When you put your album together, you've got that space in between the spine and the front and back cover. So mine is usually a quarter of an inch, so it just looks wider than it probably is. So I like mine to be a little bit wider. So I've got this ready. This is going on the spine, so it's foiled as well. And then I printed one main base page out. So this is main base page 10D. I printed the letters of background on white cardstock. Okay, so how I trimmed it out was I took the two short tabs off and I left to the one long tab and I put tape on the printed side with the background design. I put the tape on that side on that long tab and I notched the two corners. And then on this one I put tape on the printed side, but honestly, I meant to put it on the other side because we're going to be matting this, so it was kind of like a waste, but it's going to be a waste anyway because it's going to be on the inside of the uh, pocket. So anyway, this one doesn't matter, whichever way you want to do it. So I left all the tabs on and I tabbed everything, put tape on and tabbed everything. Everything's inked up, ready to go. So then I also traced this mat for the big pot for this part. So it's this mat right here. I traced it because we're going to be matting this side. And that's the pater, the, the pater, <laughs> that's the paper I chose. And that's what's on the back side of it. 
And then I traced onto the coffee stained um, foiled paper for the other part of the pocket. Okay, that is all we are going to need. Someone did ask me, let me find it. If you could, if you could print on regular copy paper, foil, you know, print with the black background, foil it, and then coffee stain it, because I usually do it the other way around. I um, coffee stain and then I print on top of the uh, paper and then I foil. Well, I tried it and there's the result. So I printed this onto white copy paper, just plain old 20 pound copy paper. I foiled it which it looks pretty good, right? Foiled pretty good. Then I coffee stained it, but it does look slightly different. And the black ink that didn't get foiled kind of washed away a little bit. Let me see if I can have it the right way up. So I don't know how well you're gonna be able to tell, but it does foil more without it being coffee stained first. So, but it changed the look of the foil a little bit too. So yeah, it can be done. And I did put it in my oven to dry as well. And that might have had something to do with it too. How we're gonna put the, oh, we also need to do magnets as well. But first thing we're gonna do is we are, well, we're gonna take, I think, and put this pocket onto here. So the letters background facing down, we're gonna put this pocket on top here. But first we're gonna burnish this down a little bit. And I didn't cut straight across on my corners. I wanted it I wanted it to be able to be attached to the end there. So we attached the long tab to the two short tabs. And we're gonna remove the tape backing. And let's do this one. And we're gonna add it here. Corners okay. So now we have the pocket. So there's the letters background right there. All right. So then the next thing I want to do is I want to flip this over to where the letters background is facing up, and I'm going to attach the mat for the cover. So this is the cover mat. Oh, also I did ink the edges of the album all the way around uh, off camera with the same walnut stain. So we're going to take this mat and we're going to attach it down to that tab. Okay, so we're gonna remove the tape back in. And we're going to just walk that down. And I look like, it looks like I'm a little off. But that is all right, you see that? But that's okay. I'm not gonna worry about it. I could if I wanted to. I could try to shift it, but I don't think you're gonna really be able to see it that well. Okay. So before we add this down, we need to add some magnets here and some magnets back here. So I'm gonna grab the magnet. And we're gonna use we're gonna use magnet to magnet because there's gonna be some weight on this pocket. So let's put a couple down. And then I'm gonna flip it over. Boop. And we're gonna add some magnets. To the back side of that. And then, before we do anything else, I'm going to take my tape. This is 3 8, three eight inch score tape. I'm going to go all the way around the edges. Oh, I need my tool. So I don't cut my pretty 
paper. Did I already tell you that this is just copy paper? Coffee stained, copy, 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 20 weight, 20 pounds. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I can't talk when I'm in a hurry. I just can't. Not that I'm in a hurry, hurry, but I feel like I'm in a hurry. I feel like people are waiting on me. I was getting ready to get to you. All right, let me burn this down really quick. All right, and then I'm going to take a little piece over top of that. Oops, sorry about that. Varnish. Okay, then I am going to use a glue stick to cover the rest of this part. This is that Uhu. Oh, in my monitor, that color looks terrible. But I'm going to take the backing off of the tape first because we are going to stick this sucker onto the cover after we get some of that glue stick on there. going to go where the tape is not, mostly, because since this is just plain old copy paper, I want to make sure it gets stuck down. I'm going to flip this over, and I'm going to line it up as best I can. We have success. Oh. All right, lovely. All right, next thing we're going to do is cover the magnets. Cover the magnets. We're going to cover this pocket. Uh-oh. What happened? There we go. We're going to cover this pocket. We're going to mat that right there with this piece. And I'm just going to use tape runner because um, there's no risk of it coming up. This is the Scotch ATG. You can use whatever tape you have. You could use liquid glue, which I'm about to use on the mat for there. Use whatever you want. Probably should have used liquid glue. So I had a little bit more wiggle room. It just looks so much better once it's matted, I think. Okay, so for this piece, I am going to use some liquid glue. I really want the whole thing to be stuck down pretty well because we're going to put stuff, flowers, and embellishments and things on that little piece there. So I'm just checking to make sure it fits. Let's use Fabric Attack for this. Fabric Tack by Beacon. Um, I don't know if I've told you guys. I figured out how to prevent my glue from overflowing. I still catch myself doing what I'm about to tell you not to do, but um, 
it does make a difference. I'll show you in just a second. All right, one thing that I'm really bad about doing, I have no patience, so when I go to use my glue, I shake it down to get the glue down into the tip. Well, that's putting air into the bottle, which makes it want to erupt once you stand it upright. So if you just hold your bottle upside down and let it naturally, like gravity pull it down, it won't erupt as much. It's really hard to remember to do that, just saying. I'm really bad about it. I have no patience. None at all. <laughs> That's not true. I have some patience. I shouldn't say none at all. Right. I'm going to get that a little bit of a varnish. All right. Before we start adding... I'm gonna let that dry. Before we start adding stuff onto it, I'm gonna open this up and we're gonna mat this piece and this piece because I don't think we're gonna do anything in the box. So we're just literally gonna tape it on. I'm just gonna use tape runner tape again. For the spine piece, I think I'm just gonna use the liquid glue on the paper here. I'm gonna use fiber tack again to glue the spine piece down. We're just going to be adding things on top of it, so. Okay, so I think we're going to leave that for right now. Just leave those the way they are. And let's start embellishing right here. I'm so excited. Okay, so we're going to be using these. We're going to be using this flower. This is, um... 648503. It's the sugar cookie Christmas flower thingy. And we'll probably end up using this packaging as an insert. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out. Of insert somewhere. I don't know where, but somewhere. I'm going to put that over here. So we're going to be using these. Aren't these fun? Except I think I'm going to flip this, the curly Q part. I'm going to flip it to the back like this. Maybe open up that curly cue just a little bit and give the stem a little bit of movement. It uh, doesn't really matter which way you, you do it. Just give it a little bit of something, something. Right. Try to make sure it's a little bit flatter so that it makes connections. So cute. All right, let me get the tray, the crafty tray of all the different flowers. So I wanted my little, my little skates here. I wanted them to come down here at the bottom, just like I have on my prototype. I'm gonna have to flatten that a little bit better. I might have to glue those down so they'll quit moving. So I wanted them at the bottom. And then, um, I wanna try to get some of these blue greeny teal color ones in here somehow. Then the little snowman, I'd like to tuck him in over here. And then the little Santa over here. They're just so cute. They're just so cute. Well, I don't like his little thingy sticking out of the side of the album there. Let me scoot you in a little bit. I can't get you in too far because then you won't see anything. Okay, I'll try not to move the album that much. Um, so anyway, adding flowers, so I'd like to add a flower up here, and maybe one over here. That's what I'm thinking. Does that look good? I think it looks good. We're just going to commit to it. I think that's just how we're going to do it because I already know in my prototype, I know it looks good, so let's just commit. We need to get this thing down first, though. It's driving me nuts. Driving me nuts. 
So I'm gonna flip it over on the back and I'm gonna add Fabri-Tac to all the places I think it's gonna connect or needs to connect. The stem. And it'll be glued down in other places too because the flowers are gonna be over top of different parts of the stem and stuff. So don't you worry about that. So I'm gonna flip this over. Aren't these cute? I'm so glad they come out, started making these types of things. They're so cute. Ooh, I may should put some under some flowers too. See, I should be waiting instead of forcing it down. The glue, I mean, not the, uh, not the flower. Okay, maybe get this one. See, mine's at the point that it will probably start erupting if I keep forcing it. If that makes sense. All right, let's put the snowman down. Even though I don't think he's completely dry, we're gonna put him in anyway. Um, sort of like that maybe. So, a little bit of a close-up. Yeah? Pretty cute. I was, gonna th I was thinking about having the whole thing removable, but I decided not to, because we can work around that little bit of a bulk while we're working inside. And, oh, this isn't, this isn't very long. I was gonna use this as a weight to kind of keep things down. So, I'm just going to leave that there, and I'm going to scoot it over, and I'm going to scoot you guys back out. Whoops. Okay, so next up is the cute little insert that we're going to put in that pocket that we just finished embellishing. And that is, we're going to need the Basically Amazing Charming. No. From the Basically Amazing Charming, we are going to need <laughs> page 39B and 40BD. I printed both of those out onto white cardstock with the letters background. Okay, so I trimmed them out. Um, on this one, on the 40BD, I took both long tabs off and left the short tab and put tape on the letters side, the printed with the letters background. And then this piece we're not gonna be using right now, so I'm gonna put that aside. And then I traced the mats for those. And the mats for those are 86B and 87BD. So here's the mat for that one. That's what's on the back of that paper. So I'm using the kind of like the collage look from the paper collection. There is the pink and green um, distress stripe. So that's for that. And then I thought this is going to be on the back of this, so I thought what a great little place to like write or maybe even put a photo. You could put a photo if you want. But this is one of the digital papers from the scrap journal. This is uh, the one that's got my mom's pink and green handwriting on there. So in the scrap journal there is a separate zip file that has two different PDFs in it that um, one has 8.5 by 11 and one has 11 by 17. It is not included in the charming, it's included in the scrap journal add-on. So. Um, but anyway, so I traced one out for that, for the back. So that is what we're going to be using for the insert. So 
So, let's see. What are we going to be doing here? So that we can put... We're going to have... It's not going to be... Obviously, it's not going to be an envelope. It's going to be a fold down scenario. I'm trying to think, how am I doing this? Um, yeah, just like that. So with the with both pieces pieces with the letters background facing up, we're gonna take the tape off of the little lone tab that we left there. And we're gonna attach this to the back side with this piece right here. to make a flip down, right, it flips down, and then there's this part. So on my prototype, we made it to where it was like we could tuck it in there, so we're going to do the exact same thing. So I don't think I'm going to put any mats on just yet, because I'm not quite sure. I can't remember how exactly I did the prototype, but I do know. I used some coffee stained paper. So what I did was I took an eight and a half by eleven coffee stained page. I actually took two, but I'm using three pieces. I folded it or cut it in half. Excuse me, cut it in half on the eleven inch side, so it made five and a half. And then um, I trimmed it down to fit inside of here, so I had to shorten it a little bit. So there's three pages. I'm trying to think of what's the best way. I think I, what I'll do is staple. I'm just using a little stapler. Oh, don't use the good stapler. That's like an antique. We don't want to use that. Do I have another stapler? I don't want to use my, because you're not going to see the staples. I don't want to use my fancy one. My Tim Holtz one, I think, is jammed. This is a, actually, this one's an antique -y one, too. Hmm. Yeah, I was going to say it may not work. Okay, so I'm just going to staple these three little pieces together on the top there. And then, I think I'm just, going to maybe glue, maybe glue them in on the top and bottom. I didn't want the staples to be on the outside. Even though we're going to be matting them, I didn't want it to be on the outside. So let's do that. I'm going to take my fabric tuck and in my little collection of pages here. I thought this would be a great little place to write a bunch of notes or you could put a photo on every single page if you would like totally up to you and then there's that lone piece in the middle let's make sure it gets a little bit glue and I'm gonna stick this on here I don't have to go all the way up right and I'm gonna fold that over top and we're gonna burnish a little bit So then this will go like this. Boop. So you can see the little staples now, but that's okay. We are going to mat it so it doesn't matter. Oop, let me ink the back side of this. Alright, I do think we can mat. I think we can mat it. I think we can mat it. We probably could have matted it, matted it before. <laughs> but I think we can mat it now. Don't you love that edge? I think that's so cute. So let's start there. We'll just go ahead and mat the whole thing because I think we can. I'm almost pretty sure. Pretty sure? Almost pretty sure. That is not exactly 100%, is it? So there's that. And we're not going to mat this. You could put a picture here, um, a photo mat. I just have just one sitting here. You could put a 4x6 here if you want to. If we have one left over, we'll probably stick one in there. That one's just um, one I have left over something else, from something else. Okay, so let's see if we're gonna be able to, yeah, cause you kinda have to like, tilt this back a little bit to get that under there. So keep that in mind, right? So let's mat this back side. Yep, yeah. all right, now let's mat this part. And I can't decide if I'm going to put this little piece here 
it's really not necessary and it kind of gets in the way I mean you have to you have to like get it out of the way I don't know we can always come back and add it but I'm gonna leave it off for now I think just for right now I'm gonna think about it if I want to leave it on there but it's cute we might we'll see oh when in the prototype I just made it the back with um, the paper collection all right, and then we're going to need some black and white baker's twine and not that piece, but I fussy cut one of the pieces out of the paper collection. And I also got this from the ephemera. This is the most wonderful time of the year, but I'm going to cut this into a strips. Okay, so I'm going to just cut it down a little bit. And then I'm going to ink these up. And I'm going to ink this piece up too. So. Oh my God. Do you guys want to see a cute picture of my granddaughter? precious little face. <laughs> Just eat her up. Mm, mm, mm. Anyway, okay. Squirrel. All right, I'm going to take this and I'm going to wrap it around there a few times. So, um, I want a top bow too, so I need to give myself a little bit of extra. Let's see, one, two, and then tie a bow at three. Or let's start with a knot. We'll tie a knot at three. And then we'll tie a bow in a second. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna adjust these just a little. I love doing this. I love uh, Baker's twine. It's, I just think it adds a little extra bit. And I like them being crisscrossed. I think that's cute. They don't always crisscross on the back, but they did on that one. So let's see if I can get a bow tied on here. Start with a big one, make it smaller, pull it tighter, make it smaller. Boy, I got me a tiny bow now. I can't even get my fingers in there to to loosen it up a little bit. Yeah, look at that. I did a pretty good job. Well, it's not perfect, but good enough. Okay, so then I think I'm gonna slip this under, in and under and around, kind of like that. And then we'll put the most wonderful time of the year on there. We might have to scoot this up a little bit more. Gosh, I feel like, I kind of feel like now we need to add that charm. Okay. How did I do this one? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. I'm going to glue it. Actually, I think I glued it over top of everything. Oh, I did. Well, well let's glue it over top of everything then. This one overhangs a little bit, so I need to be careful. Right? This is the simplest little embellishment. All right, and let's do most wonderful time of the year. See how the Fabri-Tac gets you, allows you time to move things around. 
Uh, sometimes I'm so thankful for some Fabri-Tac. Most wonderful time of the year. That looks really good. Okay. I, I might leave those tails on there for now. Maybe not. And you know what else? I should probably put a little dab of glue just on there. Just to tack it down. So then this is going to slide in here like that. Oh, look at how cute. I'm still debating on whether or not we're going to add that charm. So it kind of looks like that. Maybe we'll add the charm when we do the closure because we're not going to do the closure in this video. So they're super close to each other, right? Okay. What else do we need to do? Oh, I guess I should show you that it does still open. Right, so it still opens. We're still good. And then you just tuck it right back in there. I love that. I need to get this glue off my finger real quick. Next up, back here, we are gonna put some photo mats. And I'm pretty sure I just wanna do a three, two three by four photo mats here, like that. Yeah. And then one five by seven here with this little bit of an embellishment down here. So this is the one that I picked out. So I'm thinking though, let me flip this back closed, that I want to do a little bit more fussy cutting. I want to cut these little white areas out, if they can't see these little areas here. So I'm going to zoom in and get my craft knife out. Oh goodness, you guys, that's super close. Okay. Um, where'd my craft knife go? Wonderful. Oh, right here. This is a Martha Stewart craft knife, but you can use um, the Scotch one. So I'm just gonna take my time and like almost do the same thing as fussy cutting, except we're using a crack knife instead of scissors. Okay. And it's up to you how much detail you want to cut, but I think it's fun. might be a little too tedious for some people and that's okay <laughs> you can just leave it on there well don't want to cut that out I wish I had a different thing to cut it on a different cutting mat so that I could turn it easily so now I'm just going to take these pieces out and if something's stuck, I can just come back and cut it off. So, what do you think? There it goes. Do you like it better? With or without? I think it's kind of neat. So, I'm going to do it to this other side really quick. Really quick. Well, you saw how fast that was. I didn't fast forward it or anything. Real time. It does help to have a sharp, although I don't know how sharp this, this um, blade is, but it does help to have a sharp one.
talk while doing this, apparently. That's funny. Yeah. Do we like? So cute. So, I'm gonna take my glue. Well, let's just keep using the Fabri-Tac since we got it sitting here. Put the two three by fours there, and I did stamp them already. Look at me, trying to be patient, but not being very good at it. So this could be a great place for a big family photo or something like that. Don't you think that'd be cute? Same thing with this piece here. We're gonna have to make sure we don't glue the whole thing down. But... And then let's add this down. Oh, that's cute. I like that. So the photo will still slip under there and you'll be able to see whatever's behind there because we cut out that little window, the little peekaboo. Yeah. Okay. And then I do want to do a little bit of something on this spine piece. Yeah, I'm going to open it up again. So that's what the whole cover looks like right now. But I want to put a, I want to put a label that we're going to stamp on. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. I get my, my, um, what's this, what I call it? My ephemera journal, <laughs> my ephemera book, my, surely I got the little ones. I think I need a little one. Oh, I guess I have to have a little one. Yeah, because it's a skinny. Where's my little ones? Do I not have them? Well, I thought I had those cut out into, I guess we'll just use the paper. On the sticker, I thought, I'm ha I, thought I had them on the sticker sheet. I must have used them already. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna attempt to put 2020 on here. I'm gonna grab the, um, the block. Oh no, I don't need the block. I'm gonna use these. We'll see how this goes. And I'm gonna use the two zero instead of the 20. And see how good I do. I'm probably gonna really, really be bad at this. So the, the number here is not where the number is here. So the number is down a little bit. Um, let me scoot in. <laughs> I don't know why I keep scooting out on you. Okay. Well, let's give this a try. Two. <laughs> the same with the zero. The number's down a little bit. Oh, that's not too bad. And then another two. Oh, I'm going at a slant, it looks like. That's okay. I'm doing pretty good, I think. Yep. <laughs> it's okay. I like it. Okay. So, we could put that here. And then I was going to use a Say It in Crystal. On the prototype, I did one on top, one on bottom. Since my, since my 2020 is kind of wonky. Let's glue it down. Do you guys do that? Do you guys just use the glue that's uh, on your station that's just right there in front of you? It doesn't, I seem to do that quite a bit. It doesn't seem to matter. It does on some stuff, but whatever sit right there is usually what I grab. Okay. So I can use, let me use these. This is just a We Are Memory Keepers like pokey thingy. And then down here I used one of these little metal embellishments and I glued it down here just for some decoration. So let me show you how I did that. I have used my Tim Holtz scissors for this before, but I don't more recommend it. But I am going, I have glasses on too as well. So don't let anybody freak out. 
These are these are made for metal. These are like heavy duty nippers. <laughs> and I just nipped off that little piece of not the white part, but there's like a little um where you would hang hang it from. You see it right there? I just nipped that off of the charm itself. And I'm just gonna glue it down like it was like a flat embellishment. If you don't have anything to nip that off, just leave it. It's okay. Just leave it. You don't have to you don't have to take it off. But it is a cute little embellishment. And you know what? Instead of having a dangly bit on here, we could technically we could put one of these right there just like that. Oh you can't see because I was out of frame because I'm zoomed so far in. Do you see where I put it right there? <laughs> I just stuck it down with the glue. I don't even think I mooshed it. There we go. Okay. So what do you think? Maybe we could do that. To the, let's see. Or... We could potentially put this on here and have that that loop pointing down so that if we wanted to we could dangle something on there huh that's a thought let's do that once it's dry if I want to cut that piece off I totally can but for right now I don't know what I want to do so we are going to add this little bit right here. I'm going to try to quit moving it around so much. Okay, those are going to need a minute to dry. That looks too too cute, right? So then we can literally like maybe use like a jump ring or something. I don't know. I like that idea. We'll leave it like that for now. Yeah. Okay. I think we will call this done for now. We will call. I don't think I'm gonna do anything on the back this in this album because I'm trying to get this done before Christmas, you guys. I am working so hard to get this done. And plus, I wanted it to be simpler. You know, the, I wanted the whole album set up to be simpler. So, um, I think we're going to leave the outside covers as it is. We might do something on the inside covers, but not in this video. So, yeah. I mean, you could potentially, if you wanted to, you could have another layer. You could have a whole book that comes up off the covers if you wanted to. Um, the, the possibilities are just endless. So, but we are, we're going to leave it as is for now. Um, but I think it turned out really cute. I think it looks good. Yep, and I like that idea, even though it's different. It's a little different than our prototype, you know, the dangly bit. I like that too. So you'll have to let me know in the comments which one you like better, or if you're going to give it a try, which one you're going to try. Yeah, let's move this that way so it doesn't look like it's dangling. Right? They're cute. That is all I have for you in this video. So be sure to leave me a comment down below. Be sure to give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you guys next time.